I'm Johnny. And today, we're going to go over the last video. I'm going to talk a little about what I was doing and what's going on. So this is a track that I built in about three hours. This is by no means the only way to build a track. This is only just how I built a track. What we're looking at here is the opening screen of Ableton. This is version three of my base template. We got the basic default track set up and the main mix bus set up here. You can see kick, drum, break, bass. This is really the ground floor. And the first step is really figuring out what the central theme is. Now the central theme to this particular track is from a sample that is both from a movie and also sampled on, as we can see here, the future sound of London, Dead Cities. And I particularly liked that sample because at the time I was going through this thing, there was a side to my past that I wanted to bury. Here we can see I've pulled in that sample off of YouTube because I'm a bad boy. Now, this is where I start to muck about with a sample and I turn part of the beginning into an actual instrument. And that's that, that kind of oof sound. Now, it's nice to have a set of kick drums set up real quick just so I can lay down a basic four on the floor kick. So that's what's going on here. And what I'm using is the control surface to actually add these instruments and effects. So there's less mouse movement going on, which I find really helpful. Now Yin is the name of my black Zox box. And so here I'm setting up some reverb and then some distortion just to give it a nice, really brutal sound to it. Now I'm just sort of rounding out the percussion, just some really basic claps, hi-hats, just something to give like a firm foundation to the track. After that, I add 303 number two, Gang, the white Zogs box. And I've already got an effect build up called the 303 Chorus Distorter, and that adds a chorus and some heavy distortion onto it, and I can just twiddle the knobs and get the sound that I'm looking for real nice. Then adding some percussion. And you can see here I'm building up this single layer and this is kind of the single layer that's the basis of the track. Now what we're looking at here is something I like to call out as a completely failed experiment. There is all this mucking about with beat repeat and it just wasn't working for me. I didn't like the way it was sounding at all so I gave up and I actually killed that entire track. And I think that's important when you're making a song, just be able to say, okay, this isn't working, I gotta stop now, I gotta do something else. So this is me just kind of farting around at this point. I'm listening to the whole set of sounds that I've got going. Is this a viable track? Yes it is, I like where it's going. So, the next step is to pull out a sound from a different song. That kind of trumpet hit is what it's called. And you can see here it's colored blue. So I'm working on the first build and breakdown here. Now part of that breakdown is this kind of time stretchy goodness and I am just such a sucker for a solid time stretch. Or even a really crappy time stretch. So green is what I consider my effects. Red is the kick, um, which is not necessarily a kick in a drum and bass track. In a drum and bass track, it's gonna be the kick and the snare, but it's like the central anchor. And then purple is kind of my break beats. So this is me working on the break beat here. I've got my slices set up and I've got something of a basic break happening. And now it's time to start using the saturated and the glue compressor to get it working together and to get it gelling nicely and to get it more in the forefront. Okay, what's missing is a bass. So here you can see I've got some sort of bassy synth going and I've switched over to a different one and yet a different one still. I found something that kind of works to the flavor that I want. And you can see here the bass is like a nice deep blue. It's still a synth, but it's another thing that ties the track together. Okay, so here I am working on 
the second section of the song. I'm listening to it, I'm playing along with the parts here, and I'm sort of listening within myself, as it were, and trying to find what the song is missing. Which sounds kind of loofy, but I don't have anything else to say. Now at this point, I've decided that yes, what I need now is another good build and a breakdown. So this is me working on the buildup. And then the breakdown. How does the breakdown sound? And then here you can see pretty obvious snare roll. And then the drop. So the drop just has a couple of effects going on, a break beat, and the kick drum. At this point, I want to fill out one of the 303 parts, so I do that. I'm not convinced that the distortion is exactly how I want it, so I'm messing around with the distortion, some EQ, and some compression, just to make it sound even more brutal. And here, I'm setting all the outputs of all the different tracks to the mix buses. At that point, I can start compressing the mix buses and use either the kick or the bass as my side chain, depending on what I need. And here you can see I'm getting surgical with my EQs, giving enough room for the bass drum and the bass synth. Here's the compression I was talking about. Finessing the track a little bit, just making sure everything is fine. And at this point, I'm ready to record the full arrangement. So start from the top and just build up the song as it goes live on the control surface and it's recording in the session view, which unfortunately isn't being shown here. But you can see the window here moving according to the position on the control surface and you can see different clips that are being triggered. All right, so now I've got what is the guts of a song all laid out. And I can just tidy up the arrangement a little bit, remove some of the more repetitive parts, add a few extra little builds, little fills to make the song that much more interesting. And then it's mastering time. I'm finding specific resonances in the song that are just a little too loud and like subtly EQing those out. And I use the L6 limiter to, uh, well, to give it that Fuck you, Loudness Wars boost that, uh, you know, because it's Loudness War. But then after that, just a little more finessing of the track. Just tidy up the arrangement, get some fades out, tweak the 303s a little bit, and it's basically done and ready to go. So hope you enjoy this little look back at what the hell I was doing and what was going on. And uh, until next time... Making techno is fun.